Welcome to Gateway of Hope Church, where we believe in connecting real people to a real God in a real way. You're about to watch a power-packed video of one of our worship services here at Gateway of Hope. We pray it'll be a blessing to you. So come on, grab your Bible and prepare your heart, for you are about to be taught the infallible and perfect and complete Word of God. Christian home, and you'll hear about it a little bit more later on this evening, 
But we also have, I just want to let you know that we have also gathered some local talent. We have some special guests. We have our own praise team who is here to entertain you. So I hope you guys really enjoy your evening. And um, we are also hosting two things. One, like you heard earlier, we have our silent auction, which is taking place in the vestibule. Um, you'll find uh, three by five cards, write your name, your bid, and the number of items that you're bidding on, so that we know at the end of the night who's getting what. Okay? The second thing is we are actually hosting a dessert service. We will open that dessert service for you in a while. Some of the items that are being served in the dessert service are also part of the auction. So if you like it, you can take it home. And there is going to be a fight for the cheesecake, so start making sure you put in the right bids. Okay? So basically, I want to say that it has been a lot of fun putting this together. Um, come across quite a few very good, very loving, um, very supportive people in our community. You guys are all part of that. And um, I thank you. Um, I hope you guys really truly enjoy what we put together for you this evening. A reading from Isaiah 9 and 6. For unto us a child is born, for unto us a son is born. And the government will be on his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now this is a prophecy of the coming of the rule of Jesus Christ on the earth. These verses gather into one announcement, and the predictions of the birth, the deity, his earthly government, and his just kingdom, and the eternity of Christ. For unto us a child is born. The purpose is Christ's coming. And guess what? He came just for us. Amen. For you and for me. So that we can have a chance at eternal life. on the earth. From eternity, he was planned and he was given to us. Jesus is the son of the almighty God and he has always existed in eternity. The word son is used to show the relationship between God the Father and his Holy and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Jesus will reign as King Jesus, King of the world, and the government and the entire world will be on his shoulders. He will have to suffer. He will have to take the pain. And he died, and he gave it all up. shall be called wonderful. When he came, God was a wonder. He transcends all our human understanding. And he is unique among all other human beings. There's none like him. And he stands supreme. His name is wonderful because Shall be called Mighty God. 
And I remember my grandmother used to sing, What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him. And heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. There is no one like our God. There is no one that dwells in the fullness of time like he does. He's Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Everything that we need. He's a mighty God, y'all. Trustworthy, patient, kind, our strength, our healer, our redeemer. Nobody like him. What a mighty God we serve. And his name shall be called Everlasting Father. And this is translated the Father of Eternity. All ages in due time will meet him. He is the Father, the Son of our most holy Father. And reverenced above all, three in one, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. The everlasting Father. And he shall be called the Prince of Peace. And the peace of God will be characterized by Jesus Christ. No other peace like my Jesus. No other understanding like my Jesus. Nobody.
This will be your last opportunity to make your bids. 
I'm sure there'll be a competition for the cheesecake. <laughs> I may have to bid on it myself. He's just trying to drive up the price, people. Don't listen to him. <laughs> Don't listen to him. <laughs> His comments, the true light would touch every man. The true light is a part of the world. The world was made by him. And in him, the world was made. He gave the right to all his children who believe in him. He gave them God. And as he turned on that light, he made sure that no person that believed, believed in flesh or man. Because the light belongs to him. He is our shining and our greatness. And he will always be our shining, great son of God. For God is his father, and he is his son. He was the loving favor of God, the same as he is the loving favor of you. Amen. Let us take a moment of silence, please. So 
I'd like to welcome Mark Allen.
like that tree is getting pretty low this time. We just put it in a whole other box. on 
the verse they gave me to speak on tonight is one of my favorite. It's actually a verse that if you ask the average person out on the street to name a Bible verse, it's the one they could probably quote to you. And yet for many of us, we've heard it so often that it almost goes over our head because it is so simple. For God so loved the world. Did you get that? For God so loved the world. Preachers are known for chasing rabbits. Let me chase this trail. You see, Paul puts it a different way. Paul writes in the book of Romans, God demonstrates his love. See, he didn't just say he loves us. A lot of people say, I love you. And it's a cheap thing. But God demonstrates his love. That while we were sinners, people who missed the mark, every one of us, from the youngest to the oldest, from the, from the most reprobate to the most pious, we have all sin. God demonstrates His love that while we were sinners, He died for us. For God so loved the world. You look around this room and you see the flags of nations all over the world. We have a flag, we have a map on the back to remind us that God's love is not limited. It's not limited to what I have or have not done and it's not limited to who I am and where I'm at. It's limited to where God is. And God is everywhere at all times. He was, He is, He is to come. You could no more escape His love than you can escape time and eternity. For God so loved the world that He gave. He didn't give he didn't give a white elephant gift. He didn't give a token thing. He didn't go down to the Walmart and saw what was on sale. He looked and all through eternity he saw the thing that was most precious to him. His one and only son. That whoever believes in him. How simple is that? not who goes to church most often. I'm glad you're here. But this is not about having you come to church. It's not about who bought the biggest toy. I'm glad you did, but it doesn't get us any brownie points. He gave his only son that whoever believes will not perish but have everlasting life. We were putting up this tree yesterday, wrestling it out of a closet. How many of you look forward to putting the Christmas tree up? To be honest. <laughs> it looks nice when it's finished, doesn't it? But wrestling it out of the attic or whatever closet you have it hidden in or in the garage, then you got to sit there and undo all the branches, and then there is that horrible, terrifying experience we've all experienced when you plug it in and sunlight doesn't work, right? You would figure by now with our advancements in modern technology that we would have figured out how to fix that to where the whole tree wouldn't go out over one bow. <laughs> you know, I look at this tree and I'm reminded of when I grew up. The Christmas tree has its origins in Europe, of course. It was a decorating the house in winter time was a Germanic tradition from before Christ. And when Christianity reached continental Europe in the whatever it was, the church decided to try to take some of the traditions of the local people and put a Christian spin on it, if you will. No, there wasn't a Christmas tree at the manger. <laughs> but I remember the Christmas tree that used to sit in my grandma's house, at Oma's house. It had real candles on it. And it was not permitted to be lit until Christmas Eve. And there is actually a traditional significance to that. For it was then that the light of the world had come. Then and only then could it be lit. I remember we didn't wait for Santa Claus. 
Santa Claus came on December 6th. We put our shoes outside and we got candy and things in them on December 6th. But on Christmas Eve, we would all gather at Oma's house. And right about 6 o'clock, as the church bells would begin tolling the end of the day, Oma would say, hurry, hurry, go, go in the kitchen, go in the kitchen. The Christ child is coming. The Christkind is coming. And she would go out and reach out her window and ring that bell, inviting the Christ child, please, Christ child, stop here at this house so that we can light our tree, so that the light of the world is present here in our home. And then we would come out, there wouldn't be a bunch of toys like this. We'd have a present, a gift. It was a good gift, something we really wanted. My friend, every time you look at a Christmas tree from now until December 25th, and starting next July, when they go back up again in the malls. <laughs> I want you to realize every time you see the lights twinkle, the light of the world has come to offer hope to a world in the midst of darkness. Amen. But you see, Christmas doesn't end in the manger. The most beautiful thing in this building to me, many times I will come in and I will only turn that light on back there and I will just sit here and I will stare at that cross. I don't say anything. I can't say. I hear any great thing and I just reflect. You know what I think about? God did not put his best gift under the tree. He put it on it. He put it on it that whoever believes in him, believe. What does that mean? That I put my trust, my faith, my totality of who I am, everything I got, because I ain't nothing. He's not asking for much. He just asked for the little bit I got. And he says, if you believe on me, you can have the light of the world. If you believe on me, you can have hope. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. We live in America. We live in America where the term saved is cliche. Are you Christian? Sure. Are you saved? Sure I am. But I want to ask you today, sitting in this room, watching on that video, are you saved? Are you, do you right now, not are you going to heaven? That's not what I asked you. I'm asking you, do you have eternal life right now? Are you living every day or are you dying every day? You see, Jesus said, I came not just to be born in a manger, not just to die on a cross, because if there had only been a manger and if there had only been a cross, Paul says in 1 Corinthians, we would be a people with no hope. We would be no different than any other religion whose God came and whose God died. But I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And the only one who can offer you life is somebody who is alive. A dead man has never raised nobody. And my friend, you can go to Jerusalem today and you can see an empty tomb. The dividing point of all of history is the life death and burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Thank God he came so that he could be risen from the dead. And my friend, because he was, you can. Amen. That meager life you may be going through, trudging through life day by day, dying a little more and a little more, waiting for the final bell to sound. That's not eternal life. I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So I ask you again, are you saved? Do you have life? If not, it's as simple, it's actually even simpler than what my grandma used to do. You don't even need a bell. You don't need to scream out a window. You just need to say, Christ.
and born in me. If he would be willing to be born and lay in a manger filled with hay, why would he not want to come and abide in you, in me? house, no one would turn off their computer, Lord Jesus, without having accepted the light of the world, the hope of salvation, for salvation is found in no other name under heaven, given among men whereby we can be saved, but the name of Jesus, and we thank you for this today, in Jesus' name, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That if I believe on him, I will not perish, but have everlasting life. The Son of God, who promised that he would come. Centuries before, we heard 
Sister Dodson, start our program off tonight with a prophecy written 2,000 years before he came. And my friend, he fulfilled it then, didn't he? Shows he keeps his promises. Which means if he's promised life, he's going to keep that promise too. The one of the promises he's made is that I will come again. We don't talk about it nearly often enough anymore. We used to sing about it, didn't we, Sister Carolyn, all the time. Singing about it when he'd come, when the trumpet would sound. And my friend, he will come. As sure as he came the first time, he will come again. And I look forward to that day. And my prayer is, as is yours, never nothing. Even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'd like to invite Lisa to the... Is it Lisa now? Or is it you? It's a melody to the platform at this time. You might be wondering, as Lisa alluded to a little bit earlier this evening, why our Christmas committee decided to choose the Pelton Children's Center as our Christmas uh, mission project. And I want to tell you a little story. In February of 1965, a baby girl was born at St. Joseph's Hospital in downtown Houston. She did not have a name, and she did not have a family. Many weeks prior to a loving Christian couple had started adoption proceedings through Depelchin. At that time, it was called Depelchin Faithful. On April the 1st, this young couple got a phone call from Depelchin. And at first, they thought it was just a very bad April Fool's joke. But they were told that a baby had been born in February and that the next day, they could come to Depelchin and pick up that baby. That baby was me. I grew up in a loving Christian home. My birth parents I got to know as an adult and find out after being raised as an only child that I have 13 half-brothers and sisters, wow. which was really a shock. But I will always be eternally grateful to Depulsion. And I'm eternally grateful. Yes, I could have been raised with my birth family. But I would probably have come to know the Lord as early as I did. I was three years old. When I accepted Jesus as my Savior. There are so many children that don't have homes. In 1965, Depelchin helped my birth mother to make some very difficult decisions. In 1965, a couple went to Depelchin as a couple and they left as a family. Lisa and I, in the first part of next year, are going to begin adoption proceedings ourselves through Depelchin. We're praying that God will bless our home with a little boy or a little girl. And we've already got them named. <laughs> This is why we chose Depelchin this year. And all these toys. There's a child. And we want them to know that they are loved. They may not ever know who we are. We want to know that not only do that we love them, but more importantly, that our Heavenly Father loves them too. Give me a sec. 
second? <laughs> yeah, I know. But I have track two. It is on track two. Technical difficulties. Technical difficulties, sorry. She just makes me more nervous. <laughs> Someday, when this night 
We're going to invite our worship team and all of the folks who have joined us. We can maybe all fit up here on this platform. We'd like to invite and we'd like to close our evening off with just a short time of worship on our own with you joining with us. Is that all right as we finish up this evening? We have some, I think we've covered most of the standards tonight, but there's a couple we left out. And so we're going to sing those together. I want to invite you all. Would you tonight, would you stand with us in this room tonight and let's have some audience participation on this. And uh, I want to really hear some good singing.
one of the things I've always told our folks is we don't strive to be the biggest, nor do we strive to be the best. If you want great music, honey, Lakewood will do a great job for you every single one. But we've had, I want to thank our music team. I want to, I am so blessed to have such a wonderful servant, music pastor, and Pastor Kim. Thank you for it. I want to make sure we thank somebody who never gets any thanks. That's the person who sits back in the crow's nest, back in the back. They have to push on those buttons, so thank you very much, Michelle. i got to tell you, this warms my heart just to look at this. It's hard for me not to have the mascara around every time I look at every one of these toys. There's just there's a box as full as this stuff out here. You will be able to sleep well tonight knowing that the things that you've done are going to touch a child in a meaningful way and bring that child to life, 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 life. Before we conclude, before we do our final thing, would you join me in praying over these toys that we are going to be presenting? Stretch your hand towards these if you would, please. Father, now look at these things, they're just stuffed animals and toy cars and dolls and dinosaurs. But Lord Jesus, they in the Bible they took they took cloths that they took from the apostles and they laid it upon the sick and it healed them. And so Lord, I know that you're able to do far above and beyond anything we could think. And so Lord, in the same way that you touched the sick with those cloths which came from those apostles. Lord, use these toys that have been brought. Every one of them, every time a child touches them. Let the anointing of the Holy Spirit rest on them. And Lord, let that child that plays with them come to know that there was a baby born in a manger. Mm. He left his home so they could have one. I thank you for it, Lord. Bless those that gave, Lord. Bless all of those, Lord Jesus, that have participated, businesses which have donated. Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord. We thank you for all of this. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The final person to thank tonight, the one who came to a us probably about three months ago and says, I have a heart for kids. I have a heart for children. Would you please join me in thanking Lisa for all of the hard work that she put in. The anxiety when she didn't know, oh, how will this song go? When the rehearsal didn't go, and oh, she couldn't find her car keys. Thank you. Thank you. my town. See, when I lived in Vegas for 10 years, I was actually on the Pride Board. So I planned one of the biggest Pride events in Las Vegas. So when I moved away, I started feeling like I was missing something. That whole event planner in me was like just dwindling away. I didn't do it when I was in Florida. So when I moved here, I didn't do it in Austin, Rob Rob, just couldn't find my niche. I came here got a whole new family. Um, I, I'm going to say, I started out in Cornerstone. I got a great family there. Yes. Came here. Yes. Came Amen. here and they let my wings flutter. I was able to plan this. I was very nervous because it's the first time in 15 years I planned something. And um, like Sven said, I was nervous as anything. Couldn't find my keys. I was panicking. <laughs> Um, but I've got a great team, and all I had to say was, Rose, can you do this? Can Corinne, can you please make this call? Cheyenne, reach out. We did garage sales to raise money to do this event. In our garage sale, we raised almost $600. Tonight, financially, we've raised, including the um, silent auction. 
we raised an additional two hundred and sixty dollars. And this is our All of our hearts together accomplished this night. Thank you all for all of your hard work. I know sometimes I ask impossible things, but <laughs> they weren't things I didn't ask for myself. So, and like I said earlier, this is the first. Now we're going to look forward to One Child 2016. Right. And, uh, I'm hoping that you guys have enjoyed yourselves enough to spread the word for next year. I'd like to see this house filled. I'd like to see the walls being pushed out because there's so many people standing in lonely. Eventually, I'd like to see some of the children from the Pelson children to come and see what we do to show love for children we don't even know. And it doesn't matter where they came from. <coughs> like I said, we all have families, one way or another, chosen, biological, whatever. But we have each other. Amen. Amen. And now they have us. Thank you all again. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, I guess we're going to announce the silent auction winners. Is that correct? Oh, is that what this is? Yes. Ah. <laughs> oh, and the cheesecake goes to Sven for me. <laughs> you weren't even in the right. <laughs> But um, let me start from the back. For number eight, which was the bag of Sensi, that goes to Rose. For number seven, I don't want to do number seven. That's the cheesecake. That's the cheesecake. You see, I think Sven kind of rubbed off on Kenneth. Oh, yeah. and it's kind of yeah. the oh. So it's anyway. What <laughs> number five, number six though, excuse me, which is the uh, the big old cookie cake. That goes to Diane. Oh. Now, thing, we don't have to ask her because we already have it, but we just need to get Diane's information because she'll get another one. On top of the one that she just wants to mine. She wants it. Then we got number five. Um. <laughs> Rose, the diabetic, <laughs> won the red belt for cheesecake. No. <laughs> However, Sven, I will tell you that you did win the Yankee Candle set. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, the prayer and the promise books. And then the first box of the Yankee Candle, the number two box, that actually goes to Carlos. And then the the first box of the Sensi that was donated by um, one of a church members, family member, um, that actually went to um, Diane. Now, I just want to say a real quick thank you. A, I want to say thank you to Megan Clark, who was here earlier, but she's driving to California tomorrow. She's the one who made the red velvet chocolate cake. I want to say thank you to my very good friend, Shiva Smith, and her family. They donated the bag with the Sensi. Okay? And um, um, Sandy, who was Laura's sister, donated the, the box with the Sensi and the prayer books and the Yankee candles and stuff like that. And Mama, of course, she made the cheesecake. <laughs> And Sven thinks he's gonna eat it, but you know. 
Thank you for taking the time to watch this video of one of our worship services at Gateway of Hope. At Gateway of Hope, we exist for one simple reason, and that is to connect real people to a real God in a real way. If that has happened to you while watching this video, please let us know by sending us an email at contactus at gatewayofhouston.org. We'd love to meet you in person. We meet Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. at 9511 Town Park Drive in Houston. Directions to our worship center can be found on our website at gatewayhouston.org. Until we see you again, remember, our worship is not over. Our service is just beginning. Let's go and be the people of God.